So, obvious first question, this project comes your way, what made you want to jump on board? And I love that as the first question, and, I, and when people ask it, it's, it's something that I always get very emotional about because near and dear to my heart, and she's become near and dear to my heart, is Nikki Atujusu, the director. Um, yes, please, round of applause. Um, and it was, it was one of those things where I, where I got the opportunity to read the script, um, watch Suicide by Sunlight, fall in love with the words on the page, and then meet the filmmaker to kind of unpack the story that she wanted to tell, unpack um, who she intended for Malik to be. And so by that time, I already had just a deep affinity. And I always say that when, in this journey that I've been on as an actor, I'm like, if I read a script and I will want to watch it even if I'm not in it, then I know it's a win, right? Because I'll, I'll still be a fan, I'll still show up, and I'll still support. So, but I knew, I was like, I have to do whatever I can to try to get this role. Um, but I definitely was like, even if I'm not in, and I told her that I was like, I was like, Nick, even if I'm not in it, I'm gonna support because it's so great. And I was lying because I was like, I want to be in it. <laughs> so did she have you um, audition with uh, Anna? Yeah. So she was. What I love about her and and and, and what you see with Nikki Atu is what you get as a, as an artist, as a woman, um, as a person. And so she wanted the chemistry to feel real. And, and, she, and she gave us both the challenge of making sure that we, we found that. And we ended up having a Zoom call, Anna and I, and we had to do a chemistry read. And it was instantaneous. We just kind of got each other. We understood the language that we were speaking. And it was important to her that that relationship, Nikki it was important that that relationship didn't just start when we got there. Because sometimes it's, you know, when you get there, you're trying to find chemistry or, or, or build chemistry. And you guys know as an audience, like we can smell it. We know when there's no chemistry or we like, we know when they don't like each other. And so Nick Yata was really emphatic about the fact that like, whoever has the most natural chemistry is probably who's gonna get this role. And so, <laughs> so that was the challenge and we found that we naturally had it. And then it was like, okay, we're, you, you're good. I just cannot imagine trying to do that on Zoom. Like that is just, crazy to me. Do you remember what the sides were? Like, what That's scene? how good I am. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember what scene it was from the film? Or was it not even in the picture? No, oh, wow. Let me, I think so. It was actually the scene, the Sierra Leone scene. The first scene, the scene where we really go, when I ask her out on a date, the scene where I walk backwards and do the whole, do the whole, you know, Jenny said, I wanted to say, hey, I see you, you see me, let's find out where we go together kind of uh, moment. That was actually the, the chemistry read that we did. Um, and so you had, I, I remember if anybody, you know, we do all do Zoom calls. I, found, I discovered that your iPad never switches the, the screen. So if you do it on a computer or do it on a phone, you know, sometimes when the other person's talking, it'll switch. Or if it's on an iPad specifically, it'll just be the other person's face. So all I had was Anna's face in the, in my iPad, so I could literally just talk to her the whole time. I couldn't see anyone else in the room. It was just her, so I was like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm all right right there. You get the role, uh, you're about to shoot it. Did Nikki Atu have any things about Malik she wanted you to know that weren't in the script? Was there anything about his life that she thought was important? That's, you know, and again, I always, and, and you guys are gonna hear me say this in reference uh, so many times, and it is, it, is, it is doting, it is love, but what I love about Nikki Atu, I always say there's a difference between a director and a filmmaker. And a director can still be so amazingly talented and they'll make sure that the shot is right. They'll make sure that every element, every frame is beautiful and they'll make sure that every technicality is covered. But a filmmaker is gonna bring every aspect of the world together. And that's why we're here and that's why we love it because a filmmaker is gonna make sure that the words off the page pop, that there is chemistry amongst the actors, that the crew is in the best place possible. So specifically with that being the, being the catalyst, Nikki Atu really cared about she had Malik very well fleshed out in her own mind. And so when we sat down and we talked, it was marrying the ideals of what I said, hey, I'm reading this story and I'm extracting this, I think from your words, is this in alignment? And so we had a template where it was like, yes, that is it, now where do you wanna go with it? And so a lot of it was like, well, I think here we can, be more, we can play more with more light. I think the, the intention of wanting to make sure that the character had a lot of pride and was confident and was really you know, chivalrous, but not in a way that sometimes come across as an intention where you read and you go, what's, what's, what's his agenda here, right? He, who is he? It was, one, it was more of one where, 
okay, this is a guy who, once you see a little glimpse into his world with his son, you see a little glimpse into his world with his grandmother, you understand that he's trying to be the best man possible. And that was something she really cared about. So the, the other thing that's uh, quite fascinating about the film is uh, the woman who plays your grandmother in the film, Leslie, the amazing Leslie Uggams, yes, legendary Leslie yes, Uggams. Yes, yes, yes. She, she came, from what I've, I've read, she came on board really late, like right before filming started, correct? That's how amazing she is. Like, shout out to Leslie. And like, the, the best part is that when you get to work with such seasoned and well-versed actors, they'll give you so much knowledge. And, and I read this book a long time ago, um, and I've read it several times, Acting in Film by Michael Caine. And he says like, it, you know, all great artists steal, and if you're gonna steal, steal from the best, right? <laughs> so I always, when those moments happen with someone like Leslie, I remember like it was myself and Anna, we were like sitting and she was like, all right, y'all, I'm gonna go to lunch. We're like, uh, you don't need to go to lunch. <laughs> you need to sit here and give us knowledge. <laughs> and we're gonna take it, so we'll bring your lunch to you. Um, and one of the things that she, she said, she always stays in a constant state of present, what is this, right? She always was ready for any opportunity and she let it, organically happen. So although she got it late, she was already connected to it because she just flows with this, this, this presence that she was already able to step in. And I remember she was playing with the dialogue on the day and she was like, I just got this last night. And we're sitting in the scene going, you just got this last night? She's like, yeah. And we're like, oh yeah, yeah no, no, cool, cool. Yeah, we do that too. <laughs> yeah, we got that too. Um, uh, the other thing that I, I noticed is, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys started shooting this in June 2021, correct? Yes. Okay, so if you all don't remember, that's when most people had gotten uh, vaccinated. Yes. And I was in New York in June 2021, yes. and it the energy was insane yes. because people had been able to go out and whatever. You're making this very dark movie, yes. but also in context, there's all this energy around. Did you guys feel it at all? Did oh, you, you feel it have felt the production? Uh, like you said, you were in New York. Are there any are there New Yorkers, East Coasters in the room? <laughs> Let's go. There you go, Yonkers, let's go. Um, and there were the people who obviously had to had to go through the pandemic in New York. Yonkers, did you have to go through it? When you say the first time people were outside, they were outside. <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> they were outside. And that's and that was one of the magic moments that we had, even when I'm walking down the street and, and, and Aisha's coming up um up the train station. Uh I was sitting there for a moment before the call action. It's kind of like this whole, you know, we're timing it out and I walk up and I see her and then I have to walk over and do my thing. And this lady just rushes past me and she's like, I got to go. This is my street. <laughs> <laughs> With no mask on. I got to go. And I was like, yes, you do. You do have to go. But um, People had parties to get to. They had parties to get to. They did not care about your movie. They were like, the steady cam can stop today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was cool. And I think even like when we were in Washington Heights, we you felt that vibrance, right? And it was, it was cool, and I think that, that electricity adds to the moments in the story, at least from Malik and Aisha, and then I think also the people around observing it, and you have to kind of conceal certain moments, which adds to those darker moments as well. So, obviously, you've done a lot of panels already with mm. um, Nikki Atu and heard her talk many times about the film. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight because viral bugs are going around, speaking of sickness. Um, but... Uh, I'm curious, wh what have you heard her say about this film in terms of its importance to her and what she wanted to say with it? Um, having sat with her so many times and, and listened to so many conversations, it's a, it's a couple of things. One that I'm thinking of is, is how long she's been in development on Nanny and with Nanny. And you think about that it was an eight year process where this was a story that first came to her and she put it down so many times and it was haunting her. And, and I think like, you know, the haunting that we see in, in the film, but I think that's also so indicative of life. It's like the choices that we need to make, the people we should be around, is that, is that intuition that's kind of haunting you and you know it's either a right or a wrong decision, but it won't leave you alone. And I was really inspired by the fact that when she said it haunted me and that's, and then to see the trajectory that it's had, I'm like, well, follow what haunts you. Um, and another thing she said, and, and, I, and, I, and I apologize, I might butcher it, it was when she says, um, there's the film you write, the film you shoot, and then the film that gets made or that you edit. And her being such an educator as well, I was like, oh, what another little feather for an artist because it's almost like it's yours now, right? Like at the end of the day, Nick Yatu and we all go on this journey, but this is y'all movie. This is you guys' is, is film to, to ingest and to have an opinion and to pass on to your friends and spread that word of mouth, and that's art. 
So in those little nuggets that she dropped off, I was like, wow, that's, that's art. You get to incubate it for a while, but when it leaves you, it's not yours anymore. And, and I'm curious, you know, once you saw the final film, were you surprised by certain choices? Like, for example, you are there when um, uh, uh, Aisha's character finds out that uh, her son has died and she collapses in your arms. And clearly, uh, you know, I'm assuming Anna, I don't know if she wailed or she how she reacted, but like, she will. did you, did you think, were you, were you surprised when you saw the film that, that, um, Nikachu had decided to take the sound away and just use score? Like, were you, did that surprise you, those sort of choices? It, it doesn't having known her long enough. And I think her pulse for knowing what's going to hit is really key. And her, and her, her, her finger on the pulse of the genre of horror to how to tell a story. It didn't surprise me. Right, I was surprised at how visceral of an impact it actually had on me. And I think I wouldn't have been as f afraid or had it kind of looming in my mind thereafter had I heard the sound. But the fact that it was almost, it was like deafening noise with no sound was how excruciating that pain was and it had a deeper impact on me. So I was surprised at how deeply I was impacted by it. That's incredible. And before we, we're gonna ask, see if there's any questions from the audience, but I do have one slightly silly question for you. Talk to me. So, um, you weren't in the bed when that, like, snake comes. <laughs> I was going to return a question back to you, but I'll leave it alone. <laughs> um, um, I, I elected to not stay in the bed. <laughs> Did you have? <laughs> <laughs> I elected uh, to let the scene serve Aisha's story. <laughs> um, um, it's funny because I didn't realize that it was going to be a real snake <laughs> there, like, I don't know why in reading the script I was like this is a real snake so, the, so we get there on the day we're in the bed and we're talking about it and we, you know, we, have, we have this great intimacy coordinator that's telling us all these moments when we're in the bed and each and every time we've choreographed it and how we lay and how we move and then Nick Yatsu's like okay I forget the snake's name she was like let's bring him in and he's coming in in the bag, and you see the tail moving. And I was like, Nick, what is that? <laughs> and she's like, it's a snake, Senkwa. It's a snake. And I was like, there's, going, there's a snake. <laughs> like, for real, I was like, wait, what? And Anna's poised. She's just like, oh, they're bringing a snake. Like, she's calm about it. They let the snake at the edge of the bed. And they're like, he's going to crawl up. And then he's supposed to come up the bed a little bit. And he's going to wrap around Anna's leg and do the whole thing. And I'm like, okay, well, and I got to be in the bed, too? I was like, what, what, what's the shot? Like, I kept saying, what, what's the shot? <laughs> because <laughs> y'all don't need me here. We can get a stand in. It's fine. I'm, I don't need to do this. <laughs> and so the snake comes up, and Anna's on me, and then eventually the snake, like, crawls a couple times, as a snake would do, because it, it, he's going to figure out the entire environment first. He's like, okay, this is my path, but I think I'm going to go this way, which happens to be my way. And so I'm, like, supposed to be asleep, and I'm glad they didn't use it. This is obviously not in the movie. But I'm going like this. <laughs> and so as the snake crawls my way, I just roll over. And Nikki Yatsu's like, you need to stay in the bed. I said, it's not my shot. It's so what you mean. It's, it, this is Aisha's story. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm here to serve this story. And you don't need me. I'm going to let them have it. Make this a two on those two right there. I'm going to go stand over here. <laughs> That's what pillows are for, to fake legs. Like, <laughs> you know? Exactly. And I thought it was going to be a rubber snake the whole time. This is a true story. But I literally hopped out the bed and was like, no, <laughs> the, I can't. The visual effects budget went to other shots. It went to other shots. Not, the, not um, that guy. Want to see if there's any questions uh, in the audience? I loved it. Great job. Um, but I wanted to ask, aside from the Zoom call, was there any rehearsal? Oh, so there was, a, there was, the Zoom call was really the introduction of, 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 the, of the chemistry and finding that chemistry very organically. But yes, there was actual rehearsal. Um, we rehearsed um, before I got there. So Anna got in first, and then her and Nikki Yatu were going through different beats throughout the story of where they were going to play out for Aisha. Um, I was wrapping a project, so she and I would do a lot of Zoom calls. And then when I got in, we had an opportunity, myself, her and Nikki Yatu, to do person-to-person in face rehearsal and really just go through beats and elements and moments in the relationship. And I think that's something that, again, Nikki Atu was really great about was <clears throat> unpacking the relationship. So when we stepped in, I think it was even more organic on the screen for everyone because we didn't have to figure out 
what we were doing. We had already had a familiarity through the process. So there was enough adequate time for us to kind of build the pillars of our relationship. Great performances all around, mm -hmm. um, including the child actors. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was wondering if uh, like those kind of minutia elements of that, where they kind of found on the day and not too scripted heavily with the child actors, or how did that was not navigated? That's a great question, and I'm glad that I've done so many panels that I can actually answer this question for Nick Yatsu. I can't do her voice as well, but I definitely can answer the question, and I think having been there with, with, with the young man that played uh, my son, I think she, what she did so well, and I had never seen before, is she created a safe environment for the children to naturally be in their element. Right, so a lot of the character, so one in particular, she talked about how with the character who played Rose, she had written that character to have a different character name, but then when she cast Rose, she was like, it would be easier for, for the actress to be in the scenes if she already knows her name is being called. So she doesn't have to, she can kind of, I guess, truncate that time of giving a note by just simply saying Rose. And it made her more comfortable, and so a lot of the toys that Rose had in the movie were her elements of comfort already. So she didn't have to try to, create an environment that was foreign to her. She could be very, very comfortable. And she said another thing too, which was that you don't cast, when you're casting the children, you're also casting the parents. And, and <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and so so uh, she said you all, you're also casting the parents and, and we obviously have discovered and learned, I mean, Rose's mom is amazing and was such, a, was such a teammate to the process and supportive and understanding. And Rose was just such a lovely light feel. All the children in the movie were just good, good kids. And their parents were just so supportive and understood how to give us the tools to help their children live in these moments. So it really is true. Like you don't just cast the children, you, you cast the parents as well. So um, my last question for you uh, before we wrap up is, um, you know, obviously Sundance was a little weird this past year. It was another virtual Sundance. But uh, as someone you've been in the business, what, 10 years? More, maybe more? Maybe a little more. A little yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, are now, you now have on your resume a grand jury dramatic winning it's film crazy. at Sundance. Yeah. And uh, Thank, yeah, yeah. incredible. Thank you. And, it, and I'm curious, I'm sure you were at home when you found out that there was no. Yeah. But what did it mean to you? Like what, and what do you think it meant to Nikatu? Oh, my. Well, um, Anyone who, who knows me knows I'm notoriously horrible with my phone. And, and <laughs> someone's laughing, cause you guys are laughing because you're like, me too. Um, I am notoriously, like I'll sit my phone down and forget to go check it. I'll, um, I'll leave it, it'll, it'll, the battery will die and I'll just like leave it all, it's like I don't need it. And so, I'm <laughs> 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 so I'm sitting in my office and my phone goes off and it's Nikki Yatu. And, I, and I'm like, okay. Nick Yatu's calling me, so I picked it up. I was like, hey, I was like, I was like, Nick, what's going on? And she's just like, Sequa. Sequa. And I was like, are you okay? What is <laughs> she's like, we won. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we won what? And then she tells me that we won the grand jury prize. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad I picked up the phone. <laughs> um, it was amazing, man. I I was I was so grateful. It was one of those things that like when it's unexpected and, and, and when you make a film with the best intentions and for it to have the legs, and I say this all the time, like I'm just so proud to be a part of it, but I'm even more proud of Nikki Atu. I'm even more proud of Anna because of the opportunity that these women get to really just be trailblazers in something that isn't always the opportunity that they're given, you know? And so truly, truly, thank y'all, yeah. Um, it's not lost on me when I say to serve. You know, many times in society, I think these stories are told from a different perspective, whether that's color, whether that's cultural, whether that's social, whether it's through a male gaze, right? And sometimes you have male actors who come in and still feel like they need to inflict masculinity on the story to set an intention of how it should go. Well, that wasn't me, right? I understood the nature of my, of my casting, which was to support these women. And I'm glad to be a part of it. And so when we win, I'm like, I'm so proud of them. I get to be a part of the win, but I'm so proud of them. And that's just how I felt. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> and um, I will just say, uh, a little less than 12 hours from now, I hope that there's very good news from Film Independent Let's go. for the nanny. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> so fingers crossed. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I'm going to get the, when is it in theaters again? 
November 23rd, I think it's in theaters, and then December 13th, it's on Amazon Prime. 16th, 16th. is on Amazon Prime. November 23rd in theaters, that's this week. Tell all your friends, please go see it. Support us, Nanny. Please keep watching it. Yes, tell them to go see it on the big screen. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you.